Welcome to Makeover. We are here tonight to give you some great information. Your destiny may be in a place that you've never been before. And I invite you to come to Makeover. Tonight we have Makeover at the show. And tonight we have some very interesting guests with us. We have Marsha, we have Barbara, and we have Donna. And we're so happy to be here again. It's been a while, but we're looking to have a great show tonight. And we are talking about rejection, because rejection is a tool that has kept people bound for years. Rejection is something that is, is, comes from pain. And once you discover why you have rejection and locate the pain, then God can do something about it. But it's so important for you to locate the pain. And so tonight I have some awesome women with me tonight from our church and we have makeover every Tuesday night at Abundant Love Ministry in Wilmington, Delaware. And Marsha, yes. tell me something that you have overcome but had held you back in rejection? Well, with me, um, I often talk about my parents, my relationship with my parents. And they both worked, they ran a business. So, I, although they were there and in my life, they had to work. I needed more of their time. So to me, that came across as a rejection as a child. Although I knew they had to work, they didn't see it as rejection. They were doing what they needed to do. Right. So as I got older, I began to pull on the things and I developed my relationship with God. And through makeover, I knew that they didn't reject me intentionally. It was just the fact that they couldn't give me the time that I desired to have because of what they had to do. Well, tell me this, what was a way that it affected you? Because as a child, I found out is, you know, I've raised children. The children need a lot of time from their parents, mm -hmm. which a lot of parents, as myself, even myself, we don't realize that. Mm -hmm. We think giving them things, giving them a house, yes. food, that's all they're supposed to get, yes. but they really need you. Yes. Tell me something that you know that it affected you. In. It affected me because you lied to yourself. Mm. Mm. You began to lie to yourself and create a world mm. that you imagined. Even though they were good parents, they weren't the parents that I needed them to be for me all the time. So then you begin to lie to yourself to mask the pain. You know what I mean? To mask that, to fulfill that longing that you wow. needed. I can relate to that because mm -hmm. I did that. I lived in imagination. Yes. You know, and mm -hmm. because rejection, it actually builds a house. Mm -hmm. And it takes God to tear it down. Yes, it does. And you know, that's a very good point mm -hmm. because that's why a lot of kids never tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Because we learn to live a lie. Mm -hmm. Yes. When we're in the house. Yes. And it's, that's so powerful. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And at this time, we have another young lady, which is Barbara. And Barbara's been in the makeover group from the beginning. Barbara is a mother and she wrote a book and um, I think that the book is something that we can all relate to. Barbara, what made you write a book? Uh, I wrote the book, this is called The Making of a Mother, A Journey to Being Made Whole. And I wrote the book because I wanted to share my experience with uh, mothers uh, who rejected their child. Uh, as you spoke about rejection, I was rejected, and what I did is I rejected and abandoned my son. And so, and I lived a lie, as Marcia talked about a lie. And what Makeover did for me is taught me how to face myself. And by facing myself, I was able to go back to my son and to share with him why I forsook him, why I abandoned him, and that's what this book is all about. And this will help many parents uh, to go back to their children because sometimes uh, Joyce Meyer always say hurting people hurt people. And so I hurt my son and it was important to me that I go back and fix the part that I played in hurting him. Okay, so you took responsibility. Yes, I did. 
and taking responsibility is a step of maturity. And I'm so happy that you shared that because I remember when you came to Makeover and I can see such an awesome change in you, Barbara. Because when you learn how to face your issues and stop massing them, yes. it yes. helps you to have a healthy life. And, it does. and that's the beginning of tearing down what the enemy builds, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and really the enemy in you that builds it. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. You know, we want to blame everything on everybody, but that little child mm -hmm. on yes. the inside mm -hmm. has to have a way of escape. Yes. Mm -hmm. And their escape is lying. Mm -hmm. That's true. You That's know, true. it really is. Mm -hmm. And so I really thank you for that. And her book is awesome, The Making of a Mother. Mm -hmm. And it takes time to be a mother, you know. And most people don't have a clue on how to be a mother. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody, Mother's Day, they go crazy. Oh, it's Mother's Day. But if you really took them aside, mm -hmm. the story would be different. Because I found out in being a mother, you have to raise up a child in the way that they should yes. go mm -hmm. and not the way you go. Mm -hmm. that's and that's where we make such a mistakes by doing mm -hmm. the same that's thing true. that somebody did for you. Not necessary, it's good. Mm -hmm. that's true. You know, and so at this time, thank you, baby. Mm -hmm. I would like for Donna. Mm -hmm. Donna is uh, a woman that is awesome. She raised a single son all by herself. And I know that you did a good job. Mm -hmm. And yes. I want to say to you tonight that I'm proud of the mother you have become. And she was another young woman that was rejected. Tell us a little bit about that. I am. Um my rejection came through abuse as a child. I was molested by my father. Um, we were passed around for a while, and were then raised by my father. And he really rejected us in addition to the abuse because he didn't really spend any time. We weren't taught anything, any life skills at all. We were never even taught how to shop. Uh, anything he would get bags of clothes from people and to just bring them home and whatever you could fit you had to put on and so you had no sense of identity or style of your own I was intimidated just to go to the mall to shop I was embarrassed I never knew what size I wore you know just little things that make you fearful growing up and I my way of uh, adapting to that was to pour into other people Wow. I just want to say something, and you're telling me that your father molested you, mm -hmm. and he abandoned you, and abused you, mm -hmm. and where do you think that come from? I'm not sure where the root of it comes from, because he's not open to talk about it, yet I know that there's... He's still living? Yes. And I know that there's a lot of abuse and perversion and dysfunction across the family, but I don't know what the root of it is. Okay. Let me ask you something else. Um, God has touched you in Makeover, mm -hmm. and you have forgiven your father, haven't you? Yes. Wow. And, you know, I'm so proud of you because forgiveness is a process. Yeah. And for someone had to, to treat you and hurt you so badly that God has given you the grace and the strength to deal with your hurt and really to break that chain of and you know when you break the chain of unforgiveness you can walk hold and the beauty of it is I did get to meet your father a couple of weeks ago and you know it was he was a very handsome man and I want to say that we'll get back to um, what we're talking about. And this is a very touchy subject, rejection. And it's a subject that needs to be expressed because it stops us from living the abundant life. And we'll be back in a few minutes with sharing more about the pain and where it comes from. And it's called rejection. So thank you. Stay tuned. Don't leave. Call a In a world where bankers have lost all interest, where robots and fat cats rule our fortunes, one woman Hi. will stand up and strive to do the impossible. Be treated like a person. Friends and neighbors will join her quest 
ordinary people will band together against the forces of corporate greed. And together, they will form Philadelphia Federal Credit Union, already in a neighborhood near you. Imagine the finest hand-selected USDA prime steak you'll ever have. The freshest line-caught seafood. Our Wine Spectator award-winning wine list and soul-satisfying desserts. Bring that together with the perfect date. The winning business deal. A memorable family celebration. Welcome to Rod Steak and Seafood Grill in nearby Morristown, New Jersey. Bring your appetite and feed your passion. Your credit score is yours, and an experienced credit expert, we want to help you really use it. With access to helpful experienced experts over the phone and online, we can help you use it to get a better idea of what info the banks have on you. Use it to get more choice of mortgages. Use it to make your money go further. Take the next step to improving your financial future with your free 30-day trial at experian.co.uk. Freppy's Tex-Mex, you can definitely taste the freshness in our food. You should definitely come to Freppy's because it's a great place. You can bring your family, very kid friendly. All my servers are amazing, friendly people. Everyone here is just happy to serve and, and I think it shows. The thing that sets us apart is the quality and freshness of our food. And I think once you try it, you'd be coming back. I'm Joe Desario, co-owner of Freppy's Tex-Mex in Plainfield, New Jersey. Hey there, everybody. This is Scott Tanker, host of Lunch with the Boss on RadioVisionNetwork.com. I want you to visit me each and every Thursday from 12.30 to 1 o'clock where we have special guests talking about the dynamics between employees and employers. We talk about their business. We let our audience know, that's you folks, what these businesses are all about and how we can make the working environment better while at the same time learning about the local businesses here in the Delaware Valley. So, I'm host of Lunch with the Boss. My name is Scott Tanker. I want to see you here every Thursday from 12.30 to 1 o'clock. Be there or be square. Thanks a lot. Today's show has been sponsored by More Than Gifts. Come see our new location in Marlton, New Jersey. Not just gifts, but more. Wow, we're back. And I am so happy to be back. We was talking about the subject of rejection. And my name is Bishop Sadie Brunson from Abundant Love Church. And I was rejected and abandoned like Donna was. And it was hard to find an identity. And I believe my purpose in life is to help other women and men to come free from the spirit of rejection. And there's other things, but rejection will hinder your spiritual walk. Mm -hmm. Rejection will stop you from even being prosperity, be prosperous. It's a spirit that takes over if you don't take authority over it. And at this moment, I'm going to go back to the ladies, and they were all so good. And I don't even know where to start, but I'm going to go back to Barbara, because Barbara said something very important. And she wrote the book, and she talked about being rejected as a child and abandoned her son. And, you know, when you, um, that's very heavy what she said, abandoned her son and rejected him. But if you knew Barbara today, you couldn't believe that because what we do out of a spirit mm -hmm. is one thing but when we come to the knowledge of who we sure. are she's a great woman and when you and that's why it's so important to locate how you act and what's holding you back and because rejection is a serious spirit and i'm going to tell you a little bit about it a little later i don't want to talk about me so much but i want to go back and I want to ask Barbara this here question. Barbara, what do you think that really triggered you 
and rejection. Uh, what I believe and what God showed me that uh, triggered me is uh, growing up in an abusive environment as a little girl. Uh, my father was physically abusive to my mother uh, and that really devastated me. Uh, I didn't realize how much it did until I grew up and uh, my mother and my father rejected me. They didn't give me what I needed. Not that my father abused me, he never did. My mother didn't abuse me but they didn't have what it took to give me the nourishment that I needed. And so therefore I went throughout life, I left my mother's house believing that all men were wife abusers or women ab abusers. Ended up marrying my father, not necessarily my father per se, but a man just like my father. And he was physically abusive and so I went throughout life driven by rejection. I didn't know it at the time, and I was always in pain, uh, uh, low self-esteem, uh, didn't think too highly of myself because nobody was there to tell me who I was. So I spent most of my adult life not knowing who I was. Wow. And you know, it sounds like that your foundation wasn't built. It was not. And a lot of times that I found out about even mm -hmm. me being a mother and how we take on the pattern of our family, mm -hmm. our mothers and our fathers, and we, we start to treat our children the way they Same think, way. you know, and mm -hmm. I found out that their kids need a foundation. Mm -hmm. They need love. Mm -hmm. They True. need hugs. Yes. They need to be told that they're beautiful, that they're special. Yes. And, you know, they have to have that. Mm -hmm. And if they don't get it from home, they're going to look for that. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like, you know, that not putting out your beautiful mm -hmm. parents, but they just mm -hmm. didn't know how right, they to didn't give know. that. They didn't mm -hmm. know. Because it wasn't a lot of love in our they generation. Right, that's right. right. Mm -hmm. You know, right. and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we say a lot of stuff. We go to church, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But there's not enough love. Mm -hmm. That, that we give to each other in the home. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to receive Jesus when you don't understand love. Yes, yeah, it's true. You yeah, know, so and true. so I really appreciate you sharing that because you are a great mom. You're a great mom and you're a very beautiful woman. And you know, a lot of times we don't know that, but I'm telling you that you're very beautiful and you know, God wants you to feel real good about yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he does. You know, it's, a, it's just do. a treat Mm -hmm. for you to come on and be mm -hmm. able to share this kind because this is the this is really the gospel that Jesus yes. lives inside of you yes. and when he lives inside of you you're you're naked and you're not ashamed yeah. of the gospel yeah, that's true. because he's the one that helps you to face mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. and Marsha you was talking about mm -hmm. that uh, you had good parents I knew your parents mm -hmm. and um, they're wonderful they were wonderful parents and was there um, in your family, was there favoritism? Was there, did oh, you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I thought so, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was favoritism, you know? Okay. Um, because the old saying that um, mothers raise their daughters, but they love their sons. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there's something about the mothers and them boys, mm -hmm. you know? And that's how it was. It was just, uh, it was um, five of us. And my youngest, brother, um, the one that's right over me, I'm the youngest, the one that's right over me, to me, he was the favorite child, wow. you know, um, mom, it was just like, she had a lot of grace and mercy on him for whatever he did, she was merciful, <laughs> me, I got instruction, I got correction, you know, <laughs> which was good, yes, because I, do, I did need it, <laughs> and what I later found out was, my mother knew her children. She mm. knows what each one of them needed, mm. you wow, know. that's powerful. Yeah, even though it, it, it looked like favoritism, it wasn't that. And I'm glad I got old enough to be able to distinguish, okay, no, he needed more love. He Amen. didn't need a whole bunch of correction and hollering at mm. him. He was mm. fragile, more fragile. Me? Yeah, I did. Amen. You know, yes, I did. And let me just say something that you got, you were married, right? Yes. Okay. Did you find, when did you find out that you was operating in rejection? Um, hmm. Well, I was married and divorced, but then when I was engaged again to another gentleman, that's when I realized 
I was operating in rejection because um, there were some things I was requiring of him that he couldn't give me. You know, there were some rules and regulations I had to set down. This is A, B, and C. This is what it has to be. Three strikes you out. Stuff like that. Rejection builds that stuff. Because I'm protecting me. You ain't going to hurt me. I ain't getting hurt again. You know, that's what it does. We think, oh, no, because you just have, you know, your, your, you know, it's okay to have your rules and regulations and things. Yes, you should have a standard. Right. But your rules and regulations, you need to check them. Mm. You need to check them because a lot of that, yes, I'm building my house to protect me from being uh, a victim. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? And that comes with control. Yes. Yes. You know, rejection, one of the, uh, the spirits of rejection is control. Major. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and we can already take another break. Mm-hmm. And this time when we take our break, we want you to just think about what we're talking about. And I want you to, we come back, we will be coming back with three other women and really two other women and we're going to still be talking about rejection and I ask you to just sit there and think about rejection in your life. We'll be right back. Don't turn the dial. Here we have an attractive orange and a distinguished apple. The two similar but opposites. Cleary, a wingman is needed or perhaps a wing lemon. A friend to the orange and an acquaintance to the apple, the lemon brings the two opposites together. See, with a little fresh thinking, the universe universe can be surprisingly smooth. (laughs) When we make Beyond Natural Dry Dog and Cat Foods, we start with real meat as the first ingredient. We leave out corn, wheat, and soy. And we own where our dry food is made. 100%. Can other brands say all that? For nutrition you can trust and your pet will enjoy. Does your food go beyond? Learn more at PurinaBeyond.com. Fitzpatrick's. Deli dine for breakfast and lunch. And at night, gourmet dine for dinner with entrees and specialty sandwiches including certified black Angus cuts of beef and wild caught seafood, plus catering options for specialty events. Since 1989, Fitzpatrick's, your hometown place with upscale tastes. Apple Ridge is about freedom. Apple Ridge is about community. Apple Ridge is about home. Apple Ridge, everything you want, more than you expect. Welcome to your new neighborhood. Apple Ridge Senior Living. Enjoy a maintenance-free, affordable luxury lifestyle today. Visit AppleRidgeSeniorLiving.com and find out more about the Apple Ridge experience. Hi, I'm Jim Turpin, host of Your Best 50. Please join me every Thursday at 3.30 where we'll cover topics that are important to the baby boom generation and their kids. And let us help you make this your best 50. Today's show has been sponsored by Farmers Insurance in Voorhees, New Jersey. To protect your assets and the people you love, call Mike Skoranek, your local Farmers Insurance agent, at 856-336-2553. We are farmers. Bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. Hi, I'm back. Makeover. It is so wonderful to have you with us tonight. My name is Sadie Bronson from Abundant Love Ministry in Wilmington, Delaware, 30 Jermay Drive. I would just like to just say that rejection is one of the hardest things to break. And very few people talk about rejection. We like to bury stuff and hide stuff. But I wrote a book that was called Mercy Rewrote My Life, and I'd just like to read just a little bit from this. And it it talks about something that 
I think it would be interesting for you. Rejection is one of the biggest hindrance to spiritual maturity in the body of Christ today. It's amazing to see how many people respond to life through hurts, wounds, and scars from the past. Our prayer should be that we might be able to understand the root of rejection and how to achieve freedom from this stronghold that has had us bound. We will spend time pulling we will spend time pulling apart the different elements of rejection so we all can understand why we feel and act the way we do. I had to tell myself that I wasn't a fearful person. I had to tell myself the truth. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's hard to tell yourself the mm -hmm. truth. But one thing I found out, when you have the Holy Spirit, He is the Spirit of Truth. So that's what you're hearing tonight. You're hearing the Holy Spirit speak from the Spirit of Truth. Yes. And Marsha said she had something else to share mm -hmm. on the Spirit of Rejection. Um, spirit of Rejection. Um, I shared before, you, you asked me about relationships. And you know, once I started developing more of my relationship with the Lord and being in different relationships and being rejected in those relationships, I learned that people's rejection is God's protection sometimes mm -hmm. and not to take it personal. Mm -hmm. Amen. God will allow people to reject you just to protect you because you don't know what you were about to walk into. You don't know who's on the other side of that. There are some things that he's trying to get to you and through you and to develop you. So he will allow you to be rejected. Amen. That is very powerful mm -hmm. because when you learn how to re, uh, embrace the rejection, mm -hmm. you don't have a problem. Mm -hmm. Because you know that rejected people will reject you. Mm -hmm. Just like you reject people. Yes. Right. You understand mm -hmm. until you learn better. That's true. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that piece. That was very important because God will protect you from mm -hmm. yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're letting somebody reject you, but yes. when you've been healed, it don't bother you. Right. You mm -hmm. thank him. Yes. Hallelujah. There's thank some you, things Lord. that you could just thank God for his protection. Amen. Yes. You know, and Dad, I want to come back to you and you know, you have a lot of pain like I have. Mm -hmm. And everybody's been rejected, but everybody haven't been molested. Mm -hmm. Everybody has not been molested by their father. It's a serious thing when a man brings a child in the world and then turn around and reject her and have sex with her. That's serious. And a lot of people are on drugs, they're homosexual, they go through all kinds of abuse yes. because of pain. Mm -hmm. And the church put them down and talk about them. They yeah. have not even a clue about love. Because if they knew that Jesus was love, they would never put you down. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They would lift you up and they would cover you. Because it's just the grace of God that we're still here. Yes. To tell the story. Yeah. To try to help somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I just thank God for you, Donna. I just want you to just share something else. My pain uh, drove me kind of away from my relationships. I was able, I had brothers and sisters and so protecting them was very important to me. And I was able to give love and you know, I threw myself into doing that for other people. But where I was hindered was in receiving love because I built that wall around my heart mm -hmm. to protect it. And so I never allowed anybody to get in. But I've learned that love has to flow freely both ways. Amen. And now I'm changing and I can receive love where I couldn't Amen. before and didn't want to, had no desire, you wow. know, being married. And I didn't want any parts of any of that. I wanted to get my son through to adulthood. I wanted my family to be okay, my brothers and sisters, but that probably would have been enough for me. And mm -hmm. I thank God that today that's not enough anymore. Amen. Mm -hmm. Isn't that powerful? Mm -hmm. It's nothing like the healing grace of yes. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because when you receive his healing grace, you can change your mind. Mm -hmm. Because the enemy comes in to steal and to destroy your future. Mm -hmm. You know, and future is very important. Mm -hmm. And I just thank God for Marsha, Barbara and Donna for being here tonight because you know it's something 
when you have a lot of pain yes. and we and it becomes rejected that we can't talk mm -hmm. about it. We can really wrap up this show tonight, but I want you to know your destiny may not be in the place you in the place that you've never been before. I encourage you to come on a Tuesday night to makeover in Wilmington, Delaware at Abundant Love Church. Your life will never be the same. Never be the same. Never. And as you see these women here tonight. God is preparing them to be great wives and great mothers and great friends and great just great women, you know. And it all comes from stop hiding and identify your pain mm -hmm. and locate where the root comes from. Because we can say, Lord, we thank you because we can love again. Oh, yes. yes. True. And so at this time, we're going to close. Makeover is the place for you. And when we come back... We're going to bring on two new beautiful women, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about the forgiveness of the forgiveness of rejection. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Thank you.